Hello and welcome back to the Biochemistry for Health Sciences channel. Today's video is about determining Vmax and Km from straight lines. As we mentioned in previous videos, Vmax and Km are two very important values that we determine from enzyme kinetics experiments. In these experiments, we determine the velocity at various substrate concentrations and then plot the data with velocity on the y-axis and substrate concentration on the x-axis. Today with computers and very good uh, nonlinear regression analysis software, these plots can be very easily made and from these plots the software will calculate or determine the Vmax as well as the Km from these graphs. In this graph that is shown here, the red sigmoidal curve has a Vmax of 100 and so does the blue curve that is the hyperbolic curve that also has a Vmax of 100. So half of that, the Km for the hyperbolic curve would be 10 millimolar, while the S0.5 or the K0.5 for the corresponding sigmoidal curve is also 10 millimolar. So this is the preferred way of getting these plots between V and S and then determining the Vmax and the Km. Another way to get Vmax and Km is to take the original equation. So in this case, for the hyperbolic plot, we take the original michaelis menten equation and we rearrange that equation so that the equation looks like the equation of a straight line y equals mx plus c. So in this case, for example, y is 1 over v, which we plot here on the y-axis. x is 1 over s. So 1 over s is plotted on the x-axis. So we plot 1 over v versus 1 over s. We get a straight line with this equation and this kind of plot is called the line weaver berg plot or the double reciprocal is we are taking a reciprocal of v and the reciprocal of s so line weaver berg plot or double reciprocal plot similarly we can rearrange this original equation into this form and if we do that, we plot velocity on the y-axis and we plot v divided by s against v divided by s on the x-axis. If we do that, we get a plot called the ed Hofstede plot. In a similar fashion, we can rearrange the michaelis menten equation into this form. And here we plot s versus uh, s divided by v on the y-axis against the substrate concentration on the x-axis. And once again, this gives us the equation of a straight line. And in this case, this plot is called the haynes wolf plot. So from these plots, whether it's the Lineweaver-Berg plot or the ed Hofstede plot or the haynes wolf plot, we can then determine the Km as well as the Vmax. So let's look at one example of these plots and we'll focus on the Lineweaver-Berg plot. So in the Lineweaver-Berg plot, we rearrange the michaelis menten equation into this form here. And when we do that, we now plot 1 over v. 
So instead of velocity, we plot 1 over velocity against 1 over substrate concentration, 1 over substrate concentration on the x-axis. And now we get a straight line. And from the straight line, we can determine the y-intercept. And that y-intercept will be equal to 1 divided by Vmax. And we can also determine the x-intercept. And the x-intercept will be equal to minus 1 over Km. So if we know the y-intercept, we can get the Vmax. If we know the x-intercept, we can get the Km. So let's look at some problems to understand how we can apply the line weaver burke equation and determine Vmax and Km. Problem number one. The following data was obtained at pH 9 and 37 Celsius. Use the line weaver burke plot to calculate Vmax and Km. So here's the data that is given to you. So it looks like from this column here, paranitrophenyl phosphate, this is actually the substrate for alkaline phosphatase that we talked about in previous videos. So this data is probably for the enzyme alkaline phosphatase. So this column here is the substrate concentration and here is the initial velocity V which is the rate of product formation in millimolar per minute. So to use the line weaver berg plot, remember the line weaver berg plot is 1 divided by S is plotted against 1 divided by V. So basically the S data has to be converted into 1 over S, the reciprocal. The V column has to be converted into 1 divided by V. So that's step number one, convert the V and S into their reciprocals. Okay, so here we have 1 over S and 1 divided by V. Step number two, we now plot 1 divided by V against 1 divided by S. We get a straight line and now we determine the regression equation of the straight line. And this can very easily be done by simple statistical software uh, such as Excel in case of PCs and in case of uh, Apple computers, they have a program called Numbers. Once we have the regression equation of this straight line, we can now easily find the y-intercept. And to do that, you simply put x equals zero and when you put x equals zero, you get your y-intercept. So the y-intercept comes out to be 0 0.2. Similarly, you can find the x-intercept. To do this, you put y equals zero. Okay, so when you put y equals zero here, you solve for x, and x comes out to be minus 0 0.5. So you have your y-intercept and you have your x-intercept. And now you can determine your Vmax. So the y-intercept is 0 0.2, that's equal to 1 divided by Vmax. Therefore, Vmax comes out to be 5 millimolar per minute. Similarly, the x-intercept is minus 0 0.5, which is equal to minus 1 over Km. And you can calculate Km comes out to be 2 millimolar. So that's how we can measure or determine the Vmax as well as the Km from the line weaver berg plot. Here's another problem. The data for velocity in millimolar and substrate concentration millimolar per minute was plotted as a line weaver berg plot. The regression equation that was obtained from this plot was y equals 0 0.17x plus 0 0.13. Determine Km and Vmax. 
So we are already given the regression equation. So in the regression equation, we first find the y-intercept by putting x equals 0. So we put x here 0, y comes out to be 0 0.13. Now this y-intercept is 1 over Vmax. Therefore, Vmax can be calculated. And we do that, we get 7.7 .7 millimolar per minute. We now put the y equals 0 to find the x-intercept. So in the regression equation, we put y equals 0 and we get the x-intercept. And we do this, x comes out to be minus 0 0.76, which is equal to minus 1 over km. Km, therefore, can be calculated and that comes out to be 1.3 millimolar. So this is how we can determine Vmax and Km from a straight line for a michaelis menten hyperbolic plot. We can also convert the equation for a sigmoidal plot into that of a straight line. So in this case, if we do that, our y will be this log v divided by v max minus v. This will be your y. Your x would be log s. So we have log s on the x-axis. So when we plot log v divided by v max minus v against log s, we get a straight line. And then using a simple statistical software program such as Excel, we can get the regression equation of this straight line. Once you get the regression equation, then you can determine the x-intercept. This x-intercept is equal to log k0.5 or s0.5 for the sigmoidal curve. So for example, let's say the regression equation was y equals 3x minus 3.1. To find the x-intercept, we put y equals 0. So we put y equals 0, and we do that here in this regression equation and x comes out to be 1. So the x-intercept is 1. This is equal to log k0.5. Therefore, k0.5 is anti-log of 1, which comes out to be 10. So the k0.5 here is 10. So besides the k0.5, we can also find the value of n because n is the slope of the regression line, which happens to be 3. So n here is equal to 3. k0.5 is equal to 10. What about the Vmax? The best way to get the Vmax is using the curve using the actual curve that is plotted between V against S. And that plateau here is very close to the Vmax. So in, so in this example, the Vmax is 100. So just to summarize, the best way to get Vmax and Km is by getting the values directly from curves. And these curves can be obtained by nonlinear regression analysis. Another way to get Vmax and Km is to rearrange the original equation into the equation of a straight line. And from this straight line regression equation, we can then determine Vmax as well as Km. So in the last few videos, we have seen how 
we can determine Vmax and Km from either curves or straight lines by enzyme kinetics. In the next few videos, we shall talk about some of the important applications of enzyme kinetics. Until next time, goodbye and have a great day.